Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to look at sequencing translations. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I know the sequence of transformations is a move on the plane followed by another, and sometimes another, and then another, and several more. But in this class, we're generally just looking at two transformations. I know that a sequence of translations enjoys the same properties as a single translation with respect to lengths of segments and degrees of angles. All this means is that it doesn't matter how many of these transformations that we have, if it's a rigid motion, it is always a rigid motion. And we know that uh, the three transformations we've gone over are rigid motions, translations, reflections, and rotations. Translate angle ABC and segment ED along vector FG. Label the translated images appropriately, that is uh, triangle A prime B prime C prime and segment E prime D prime. All right, so to do this one, what you would need to do is uh, use a scratch piece of paper as a transparency on this. And this one's nice because on the iPad I it's kind of already a transparency, so I'm just going to trace over these like you guys would. Now on my transparency, if I had one, I would put a point on F, because I can see the arrow is going to G, not only in the figure, but also down here. This shows um, that arrow F to G. And the order of the letters in this makes a huge difference. You guys should have learned that last year with angles especially. So let's go ahead and take a moment then and translate this. It looks like it's almost directly to the right. See if we can make this work then. So I'm just going to take that point and slide it across on that uh, vector right there. Now this would give me the new uh, image, which we will label. We're going to translate the vector, I mean the angle and the line segment we just created along this vector HI over here on the left. So uh, again, I, for me, I'm going to have to recopy these because we want to see A prime, B prime, C prime, and also the segment E prime, D prime. And then we're going to put a point there on H and then slide it down I. All right, so I've got those traced. And all I'm going to do is take this and slide it down that vector HI. And then I stop right there. Then it gives me the new points. This one we're going to label A double prime because it's been transformed twice. This point down here is going to be B double prime because of the second transformation. This one is C double prime. This point is E double prime. And then this point would be D double prime. Now keep in mind that this HI down here, the label for the vector, if that had shown IH, we would have slid it up that line. Because the order of the letters makes a huge difference in terms of that direction. How does the size of angle ABC compare to the size of angle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime? Take 30 seconds to talk about that with your partner. These two angles are going to be the same measure. I mean, we could measure those. We're not so concerned with that, specifically because of the next question. More like the next one. Part D, how does this uh, length of segment ED compare to the length of segment E double prime, D double prime? Yeah, they're the same size again. Now again, the question would become why? Why are they the same size? Well, this is, uh, what is this, part F, then, on this question? 
take a moment and write a quick sentence about why do you think that uh, it did not change the angle or the length of that segment. One sentence. Talk about it with your partner. One minute. Go. Um, two translations or a sequence of translations. Um, since uh, translations are rigid motions, it's not going to change the size of anything. So uh, it doesn't change the size of angles or lengths or, I guess, well, bigness or smallness. Take a moment with your partner and translate this triangle. This is a triangle ABC triangle. First thing you're going to do is translate it along the vector FG right here. And then after that you're going to translate it along the vector JK right there. Make sure you label the images appropriately. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that because it's two translations. probably a little bit different than most of you guys did uh, because we got to remember that all translations have some kind of horizontal and vertical movement even if there is none so for example on this one I'm looking at uh, this vector FG now that means we're gonna go from F to G so this one is up and to the right so each of the points I've got to move in the same way I would show this as uh, up 3 and then to the right Two. And that's going to duplicate that vector for all the, all the points on that triangle. So, for example, A, I would go up three, and then to the right two, which would give me this point. And we need to label that as A prime. We're going to do the same thing with B, up three, to the right two, to give us this point at B prime. Same with C, up three, to the right two, and that gives us this point. All we got to do to finish this uh, first image is to connect the points. All right, so there's our first image. Uh, for the next one, we got this vector JK, which is up and to the right. And we can see this one works the same way. It's going to move up one, and then to the right three. And again, this will be the same for all the points. So I'll start with A again. I'm going to go up one to the right three to get this point. And this is the second translation, so I'm going to mark it as A double prime. B as well. This one goes up one. And then, I'm sorry, B prime, and then to the right three. And this would then be B double prime. C also, up one to the right three. And that gives me this point at C double prime. So that gives me the second triangle right here. Something like this. Be careful on these because, for example, if this FG, if this FG were listed as GF, it would have been down and to the left. So the order of the letters makes a huge difference. Take a moment with your partner and uh, translate this figure along the vector first, the vector GH, and then translate it along the vector JI. One minute, go. All right, take another minute and see if you can translate this circle and this ellipse along first the vector AB, just for now. And then I assume after that we'll translate it along the vector CD after that. But just do AB for now. All right, let's do this first transformation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and again, the idea is to keep the point on this vector until we reach the end of it. So all, that's all I'm going to do is take it and uh, I'll see if I can slide it straight up like that. There we go. And then I've reached the end. And this now would be A prime. 
and the ellipse would be E prime. All right, now we're going to take A prime and E prime and translate those along the vector CD down here at the bottom. There we go, CD, we'll start at this point. And again, we'll label this, these new images appropriately. We'll give you guys a minute to do that with your partner. All right, so just like you guys should have done, I've traced these on what would be a scratch piece of paper or a transparency. And again, I'm just going to try to take this point and then translate it along that vector CD. So let's go back, do it again. There it goes. And these new figures would be the second transformation. So this is A double prime, and this one would be E double prime. All right, take a moment with your partner and just write one sentence. Did the size of the shape, size or shape of each figure change after performing the sequence of translations? And make sure you explain it. Again, that's where the sentence comes in. And of course, we know that it will not change the size or the shape of any of the figures after translations because translations are rigid motions. So we wouldn't expect them to change. This one's a good question. The picture below shows the translation of circle A along the vector CD. Name the vector that maps the image of circle A back to its original position. So if I took A prime and wanted to translate it to A, what vector would I translate it along? Uh, Take a moment and talk about that with your partner. The answer is DC because CD was going down and to the right now we need to change this so that it's going up and to the left, so we're just going to reverse the order from D to C, um, which would, of course, change that direction of that arrow. But again, the order of these vectors does change the direction, so be very careful with how you read these. All right, so this one just does not have a, uh, a diagram to look at. If a figure is translated along vector QR, what translation takes the figure back to its original location? RQ would. So if we translated it along QR, we would reverse it to make it RQ. Uh, just a quick review of the objectives again. I know the sequence of transformations is a move on the plane followed by another, which in this case for this lesson was just translations. I know that a sequence of translations enjoys the same properties as a single translation with respect to lengths of segments and degrees of angles. All this is saying is that this is rigid motions. It's not going to change angles, shapes, or size.